Hello and welcome to Eye on Africa, France 24's program focused on the continent. I'm Charlie James and here's what's coming up. DR Congo's presidential election result to be challenged in court. Runner-up Martin Fayulu says he, in fact, won by a landslide and will file a formal fraud complaint. Calls for a week of uprising in Sudan. Protests that started over bread prices have mounted into nationwide demonstrations and demands for the president to resign. And Senegal's plan to phase out its popular minibus transit system is being met with mixed reactions. Our correspondent talks to people who rely on the car rapide every day. We begin tonight in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It was a vote intended to be the country's first democratic transfer of power. Now last month's presidential election results are set to be challenged in court. On Friday, opposition candidate Martin Fayoulou urged his supporters to rise up and contest the results with him. Pre-election polls did predict a strong win for Fayoulou, but the official tally handed the presidency to another opposition candidate, Felix Chisichetti. The Yulu supporters believe a deal was struck, one that would allow outgoing President Joseph Kabila to maintain influence. Here is the Yulu appeal, appealing to his supporters on Friday. No one has the right to steal victory from the Congolese people. Do you accept that your victory be stolen? No one. No one has enough breath nor strength to steal your victory. The victory of the Congolese people. Meanwhile, the head of DR Congo's election commission has appealed to the UN Security Council, asking via video conference for the world body to support the country's new leadership. The Security Council met Friday to discuss the outcome of the vote. DR Congo's influential Catholic bishops also spoke remotely during the meeting. The group disputes the results and called on the UN to request voting data be released. France 24's UN correspondent Jessica Lemazure has more from New York. Controversy over the election results in the Democratic Republic of Congo has really divided the UN Security Council. On the one hand, you've got France, Belgium and Germany and other Western powers uh, calling for an investigation into claims from Catholic observers of the election uh, that there may have been some sort of fraud and that the official results are not the true results. Uh, those powers are calling uh, for transparency. Then on the other hand, you've got Russia, China and new Security Council member South Africa uh, saying that these official results results uh, released by the DRC uh, should be respected and there should be no meddling in the country's internal affairs. It seems really as though uh, Western powers may be being backed into a corner on this. The DRC representative at this meeting uh, said that uh, really by uh, calling into question the validity of the official results, Western powers would be uh, stoking the flames in DRC. And he said that now the focus ought to be on building democracy and peace there. The uh, representative for CENI, the the Electoral Commission for DRC, who briefed via video link, uh, essentially said, look, what's the other option? If you don't accept our results, then the only other option uh, would be to cancel the entire election and then eventually hold another one. Uh, it, he said there was a superhuman task in the first place that these elections ha had managed to be held uh, without uh, widespread unrest and that to start all over again would be, it, the insinuation was an absolute headache. Uh, and that then in the meantime, Kabila would have to stay in power anyway. Uh, so it, it seems that Western powers are in quite a tricky situation here, especially because uh, South Africa, which is now on the Security Council, uh, kept raising the spectre of colonialism, saying, look, this was the first election in DRC, uh, the first democratic election uh, since uh, the end of Bel Belgian uh, colonial rule there. Uh, so it would seem that, you know, the Security Council is really at odds. They could not come up with a presidential statement. Uh, diplomats are trying to work on one, and the hope is that they might be able to release one over the course of the weekend. The only thing they seem to agree on for now is that everyone wants the situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo to remain calm. Over three weeks of protests in Sudan show no signs of slowing down. Friday, security forces fired tear gas at demonstrators marching afternoon prayers in the capital. Laurent Bescher brings us the latest. Piling up the pressure on Khartoum, 
One of Sudan's main opposition groups called Friday for more nationwide protests against Omar al-Bashir and asked the international community to intervene. Please, I call upon international community. This is a all Sudanese people revolutions. Help us to change this regime. This is not a military revolution. This is a civil revolution. Over the past month, unrest over the rising price of bread has escalated into nearly daily protests calling for the resignation of President Omar al-Bashir after 30 years in power. At least 22 people have been killed in clashes with police since December 19th, according to authorities. But human rights groups, which have accused security forces of attacking injured protesters in hospital, say the death toll could be much higher. On Friday, fresh protests in Khartoum and Omdurman were once again dispersed with tear gas. The government, meanwhile, has shown little signs of backing down, with a defiant Omar al-Bashir telling his supporters on Wednesday he would not give in to the pressure. Whoever wants to seize power is welcome, but only through one way, which is the ballot box, through free and fair elections. Whoever rules Sudan has to be chosen by the Sudanese people, and I will salute the one the people choose. Sudan's economic crisis has deepened over the past year, leading to repeated food, fuel and medicine shortages. Authorities have largely blamed foreign powers, and especially the U.S., for the country's economic woes. The president of the Central African Republic was supposed to be in the town of Bambari on Friday, but just ahead of his visit, militiamen killed two police officers there. Doctors Without Borders also says it treated 30 people for bullet wounds. The attack comes just one day after a date was announced for African Union brokered peace talks with armed groups, but now the prospect of peace is in question. Our correspondent in Bengi, Zugoto Chaya, sent this report. These attacks came a day after President Tuadera announced an initiative to bring together the government, the main opposition, and armed groups. The long-awaited meeting is scheduled to take place on January 24th in Khartoum, Sudan, almost a year since it was proposed by the African Union during peace negotiations. This announcement could have marked the beginning of a period of calm in the country, but the attack in Bambari has raised concerns over a possible peaceful ending to the crisis. But the government, through its spokesperson, is still committed to going through with the meeting. The aim of the talks is to ensure that what happened in our country in the past will not happen again. So we have to deal with the roots of the problem. We need to look into the political, social and regional causes of tensions. These militia men must come tell us why they decided to take up arms and why they think we must let them do so. In Bambari, calm seems to have come back after a joint intervention by the Central African Armed Forces and the MINUSCA, the United Nations Peacekeeping Mission. But in the coming days, the situation there will be closely monitored with just less than two weeks before the peace talks in Khartoum. A photo of a rural classroom in South Africa has sparked outrage in the country. That's because in it, the primary school children appear to be separated by race. The photo was taken on the first day of school in Northwest Province by the student's teacher. She was suspended on Thursday. Dozens of protesters gathered outside the school the same day. The province's education minister has since said the children were separated by the language they speak, not by race. Senegal's popular public transport minibuses, known as Car Rapide, are slowly being phased out of use. Brightly painted and adorned they are a cornerstone of transportation services in the capital and run almost 24 7. now the government is replacing the aging vehicles by selling newer buses to their owners and the public has mixed feelings about it as our own sarah Saka reports the journey from grand dakar a working class neighborhood of the capital to the city center costs usman just 100 cfa francs or 15 euro cents to get to work every day he jumps on one of the many car rapide, or fast minibuses, the city's most popular public transport. Usman enjoys the ride every morning, and not just because it's affordable. Not only is it breezy, but you can also take a seat and not have to stay standing for a long period of time. 
There are a lot of reasons why I personally choose to take the car rapide. Mus has been a minibus driver for almost 10 years. He can't believe the old Renault vans are going to be phased out. If they want to take them off the roads for the sake of developing the country, that's fine. But they need to find us another job first. Otherwise, a lot of people will end up unemployed. But not everyone is a fan of the colorful buses. Many passengers complain about the pollution they cause and the way drivers speed around the city. Adama only takes them grudgingly. The minibuses stop all the time, and they idle for a long time waiting for passengers. It's discouraging. As an alternative, the government wants people to take the bus. 500 new buses were introduced on the roads in 2015, and another 100 are expected this year. Their maintenance is done at this depot, where the bus company wants to set itself apart from the private transport services. Every night the buses arrive for technical maintenance. They're checked after driving a day's route, before going to either a workshop or the cleaning station to get them ready for the next day. Replaced by younger models, the government's warned the 40-year-old Car Rapide could be taken off the roads by the end of the year. That's all for this edition of Eye on Africa, but don't go away. The news is up next.